Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another super cool radio interview. I'm your host, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have a great guest joining me at this time. I'm very excited to chat with Hoof, Hands Off Our Fest, celebrating the women, femmes, and thems of the Chicago punk scene will take place October 19th at the Blue Island Beer Company in Blue Island, Illinois. Please welcome the creator of Hoof and the front woman for Sweetie, Birdie V. Whee! That's everyone does that, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Thank you for having me on and giving me this opportunity to talk about the festival. Of course, I know we got a lot to discuss with the festival, but before we really dive into everything, I want to start like at the beginning. How did the concept for this festival come about? Um. So I'd be, I'd had some. I think the gentlest way of saying this, I'd have some like icky moments, um, specifically um, ex at, like as a woman in the punk scene. Um, and some were more of just like, kind of feeling pushed into the corner or kind of feeling like I needed to work extra hard um, to other situations where I felt um, intimidated or even unsafe in the scene. And um, I know that I am not alone in this experience. Um, I've talked to a lot of other uh, women and queer folks in the scene that have um, experienced stuff like this or have even like ended up quitting because of it. And it just kept getting so frustrating and I was feeling so much anxiety about it. Um, and instead of like, it kind of got to a breaking point where I was like, <laughs> like I'm like, I wanna do something about this. Um, because also a lot of these festivals I would see, and it's not to like fully call out these people, but like a lot of these like girl punk festivals, as they'd call them, would be organized by men. And it would, um, and I think it, it would s sometimes be with good intentions, but it was almost like infantilizing when this would happen. It would be, um, it would be girl punk and it would kind of, it just it just felt not right. And so I was like, I want to do this our way. I want it to be queer um, involved and, uh, you know, inclusive. And so um, that's how that was born. All right. Right. I'm sorry. Sorry you've had those, you know, just, you know, not not pleasant experiences in music. And honestly, from the people who I've interviewed, you know, uh, all the interviews I've done, it's Unfortunately, it's not um, an uncommon thing, unfortunately, in music. And, that, and that's, to me, a real shame, honestly. Yeah. Um, and I, I really think, even though that Hoof has happened like once, just sort of, I wanted to kind of get the bands together and sort of build a little community for ourselves. And just the feeling every time I'm at a show in Chicago and I see another musician from the first year of Hoof, it's like, ah, sister, like, it's just so exciting. And so that's kind of what I wanted to do is to sort of build this kind of community that we have. So like the moment you bump into another person, you're like, ah, yes, cool. I feel, I feel good here. Cause I know at least someone's got my back and it, it's just nice. It's really nice. I'm, I'm glad that, you know, obviously a very positive experience. I, I'm going to talk about the, you know, the first uh, hoof uh, show and then we'll talk about this year, cool. but I'm glad, you know, everything sounds, you know, Things went very good. Yet, yeah, uh, I had a lot of killer bands. Unfortunately, I know we talked last year about. It. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it, but mm -hmm. uh, it looked like a lot of a lot of fun from what I saw. And so, like, how did last year's event go? Uh perfectly. <laughs> it went. Um, it was so much fun. Um, oh my god, minus the fact that the city of Batavia decided to completely tear up the whole street the morning of the festival. So I don't know. Um, 
for anybody that's been like who's ever organized anything and it like i booked that venue because i was like cool tons of parking right um that was not the case the day of and it was like oh dear god we can't even there's nothing and so besides that and besides it being incredibly hot um it was just so much fun and i the way i describe it is like it had the same like bubbly vibes as like that like the best slumber party you've ever been to and we we're it was just so positive and awesome and everyone like just working with women and queer folks in the music scene by the time they get to a certain point i think they've really had to fight a lot of battles and so by the time they get to like i said a certain point they're on it and so they're professional and talented and really easy to work with and really cool and so just the whole event was just filled with a lot of that energy um it felt very unique for like a punk festival to have such like femme and queer vibes um at the same time too so that just kind of had like a uniqueness to it as well but it was just so much fun <laughs> like i can't i can't talk about it without just like totally uh, having a shitty and grin <laughs> but absolutely well i'm glad uh you know besides the street not existing um i'm glad that uh everything else went very well it was a very positive experience for you and you know all the bands involved people who were there mm -hmm. uh, as i said it looked like you know from what i saw a great time so like i'm curious like what'd you learn from like last year that you're like applying to this year this year's event um i learned that let's see the band schedule that i put together fit perfectly because we have to you know start at a certain time end at a certain time just that organizing the mechanics of it um what else um i learned that there's a lot of people who really want to help out with this festival um and that they're like we love that this exists let's absolutely um i'd love to volunteer and help with day of activities things like that um um, and I learned that there's like a really, there's a need for this. There's a want for this space. Um, and it, it was like everyone, people just really, really enjoyed it. Very good. Well, again, all, all, all great things. And obviously, you know, from seeing, you know, last year's event, now looking at this year's event, mm -hmm. uh, the lineup looks amazing. You know, but last year looked great. This year looks great. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm curious, like, how do you go about like, you know, um, you know, creating these lineups, you know, for uh, this event. I know now I'm like, oh God, like, what am I going to do for next year? Because like last year's lineup was so good. This year's lineup was so good. What, you know, I'm like, oh, can I, can I even top this? I think it's just, um, I like to keep it focused on um, the bands that are um, fronted or mainly consist of women, um, femmes, or non-binary people from the Chicagoland area. Um, that also extends out to like just the Illinois area in general. Um, I do like to have, last year it was one, this year's two out of town bands kind of as like honorable mention. Because while I do want to keep it still very like Chicagoland area focused, I do like to have that like the, t the outsider elements brought in, which this year are going to be um, the rumors, which I saw your shirt, and yep, <laughs> and the Daddy Sisters from Kentucky, and so they're like both of these bands. I'm just like so excited that they're coming up from their home states for this festival. Um, first year it was Haley and the Crushers um, as our out of town band. Um, they split their lives between uh, California and Detroit, and so. Being able to have them on uh, was super exciting. And I just kind of, um, I'm just always looking and listening. And I ask I ask around, I ask people who have played Hoof before, um, hey, who do you think would be a good fit for this? And I kind of just have a running list of bands that I was just like, oh, this would be a good addition. And so I reach out to people, either they're available or they're not. Um, and then I just kind of keep going down my list. So some people that I did offer a spot to for this year, um maybe couldn't make it but maybe they'll be make it be able to make it to next year or stuff like that so um yeah i'm just like i i love when bands hit me up too and say like hey we'd love to do this because I, there i think there's a couple bands on our lineup that we got that way as well it's all just been such a whirlwind that like i can't even <laughs> i'm like i don't even know where i am right now because it's festival season now so i have like six brain cells left after 
organizing everything. But yeah, so it's just looking and listening and talking to people, um, people I've played gigs with. Um, so with my band, Sweetie, like we played with the Daddy Sisters um, or we played with the Rumors between um, Hoof this year and Hoof last year. And I was like, oh, they'd be really, they'd be really fire to bring on. So just a lot of different elements at play there. Always open to suggestions, though. I, lo I love when people hit me up and they're like, hey, do you know who'd be good for your hoof list? And they give me a ban. So always, always give me shout outs. All right on, right on. Well, I'm, I'm glad, you know, obviously you've reached out, but people have reached out to you as well. Kind of, you know, very, you know, kind of, you, you talked about earlier about a community that like, you know, you reach out to people, other people reach out to you. And that's how we, you know, you have a fantastic lineup. And also for like this, last year and this year, like I was checking out all the bands already that were announced. I was like, this lineup looks awesome. I can't wait. If box, I'm so excited. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was so good too. Like it's just so punchy. And I love to have that lineup drop. And like I love to know what it is before I tell anybody else. And I'm like, ooh, it's so good this year. And so I I love that like excitement that I have and just the excitement leading up to um the day of too is gonna be really good. Oh yeah, definitely. As I said, I'm excited to be there and I know at the lineup is phenomenal with all the bands are all gonna kill it and mm -hmm. i i can't wait so I, i'm curious before we get uh too much farther there's actually more than just music too oh, yeah. like <laughs> like what what else is going on uh, um, on october 19th so it's i think well i think it's common knowledge i think if you've ever interacted with my band sweetie you know that there's like nine out of 10 times going to be drag involved somehow with the performance so they're um we have drag performers that are going to, going to do two performances um, halfway through and then at the end. Um, some really fabulous drag talents that I've worked with before that I'm really, really excited to have on. Um, this year, we actually added a stand-up comedian, the Queenie Bitch. Um, she's super fucking funny. Um, she's the one... Um, yeah, I, I, I don't want to spoil any of her stand-up, but she's so funny. Her and I have worked together before. Um, we had a, sweetie had a residency for, uh, queer drag and comedy hour. And we were like the house band. And so that's how I met Queenie and her and I just like stood in back and just like made each other laugh so hard we were in tears. And so I'm really excited to have her on. Um, Teddy Garson is returning to do flash tattoos. Um, I think every single tattoo on my body has been done by Teddy Garson. I'm actually going <laughs> to get a tattoo from Teddy again this Friday. Um, and then I've, absolutely plan to get another one at Hoof. Um, so Teddy's showing up with their um, flash tattoos that are Hoof themed, like the festival themed, not like horse themed, but, um, and- a distinction and, to make. <laughs> and they donate a, a part of their proceeds to, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of the center, but it's like a, like a queer teen center in Naperville that does like queer youth outreach. I think it's just called Youth Outreach in Naperville. Um, now that I remember it, but so they donate a part of their uh, a part of their the money that they get from the tattoos to the organization as well. And am I forgetting anything? Oh, there's going to be tarot um, because last year when we did hoof, it was at the end of September. Now it's like I'm like Halloween season. We are leaning into the witch theme. Last year we came in surfing the Barbie wave as hard as we could. Everything was pink. We had a weird Barbie costume contest at the end. It was a shitload of fun. But this year we're doing, it's like, it's October 19th. People are going to want a Halloween party. It's like, if you don't wear a Halloween costume to hoof this year, I don't know what you're doing. Like, I don't know what we're doing here. So there's that. Um, there's going to be a costume contest with fabulous prizes, obviously. Um, what else? Am I forgetting any? There's like so much. Uh, <laughs> I think... I think that's it. But I mean, it's just going to be, you know, you never know what, what happens um, when we're all there, but yeah. So drag comedy tattoos, a Halloween costume contest with prizes, uh, punk bands, you name it. <laughs> oh yeah. Now there's, there's going to be so much going on and, you know, again, not just music. There's going to be, it just, it's just going to be just fun. Uh, that, that's the best way. Sorry. There's going to be so much fun going on and there's always some different elements so people you know, like they can find you know there'll be something that, that they'll really enjoy out there mm -hmm. oh absolutely yeah and it starts kind of early doesn't end too late starts at 3 p.m ends 
around 10 ish by 11. So it's not like till 2 a.m. So if you're like me and you want to be in bed before midnight, then that is, this is your gig. <laughs> very good. Very, yep. very good point. Well. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but I also didn't want to talk about, so the Blue Island Beer Company in Blue Island, Illinois. So that's the, the venue for Hoof. So like, how did that come about to perform there? I love this question. Um, I love when people ask me this question. So I, um, Sweetie was asked to perform at Witcharama, which is like a witchy, queer, witch-themed market that happens um, at Blue Island Beer Co. And um, so we were the house band and they have like vendors come, they sell their witchy wares, and then they have a ton of drag performers. Um, the Dom with three M's is the host of the drag show. And um, I'd been kind of prowling around, keeping my eyes open. Cause I'm like, I want a big venue for hoof. I want a venue that's queer friendly. I want a venue that could be all ages. This one's um, under 17. You need to come with an adult, but so technically it's, it's like an R rated movie. Um, and the thing that like really sold it was um, all the drag performers were out on stage and um, it was one of the drag queens birthdays and the owner, Alan, came out with a birthday cake and a microphone and he sang happy birthday to her. And I was like, this is the, that I'm, I'm like, this is the venue. Like this is, it, it's like just not just being like, yeah, you can use the space, but like fully coming out, like singing and supporting and like encouraging that kind of inclusivity in his space. I was like, okay, he doesn't just like he he follows he follows what you got to do, and I'm like, awesome. It, so it's been really a pleasure to work with Alan. That that's really cool to see. Like you know, not not just like talking about it, but also backing it up as well. Like that. Absolutely. Fortunately, a lot you know some spaces are not like that. So I'm glad mm -hmm. you found a venue that fits hoof very well as blue blue island beer company does yeah alan is really good to the performers he's really fair he treats us really well um i really enjoy playing there when we get the chance i love working with alan so it's it's a good it's a good venue all right i you know i i've heard a lot about you know i looked you know checked it out you know online stuff a lot of a lot of positive stuff about it so i'm definitely looking forward to it and it looks this year plenty of parking Without the because <laughs> there's no construction. <laughs> well, well, you never. Well, hold on, don't get don't get too hurt. You never oh, know yeah. what's gonna happen day of. <laughs> if the, if that happens, I'm literally having a mental breakdown, like right in front of the venue day of. But <laughs> hopefully, no one will notice because we'll be too busy having fun at Huff. So <laughs> well, I, I hope that doesn't have. I'm I, I'm I think you had uh, probably better chances of you know the uh, street being fine compared to last year. So I yeah. hope I hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, before we get too much farther, I do got a few other things I do want to cover, but uh, are tickets available and where can people purchase them? Absolutely. Tickets are super duper available and they are encouraged to buy them now because it is pre-sale prices, so they're cheaper. Um, they can get them at blueislandbeerco.com. Um, they're also posted at sweetieband.com, so the links are there. Um also, um, if you are either a, uh, you play, so either if you play women's rugby or you play roller derby, message me and I will give you a secret discount code to get you $10 tickets. So um, just to encourage, because I played rugby for 10 years, I like to give back to um, the women's rugby community and also um, like the derby girls, it's like, it's, it's, you know, we're cut from the same cloth. So I, I want to get um as many of those people out as well so special discount code for any roller derby players or rugby girls so hit me up <laughs> right on right on. that's awesome I, I will also leave a uh, take a link in the description as podcast as well if anyone is interested so like before i i'd also i did want to talk about uh sweetie but before we do that so i know we, we talked about hoof a lot and like before we transition out of that like so if anyone's like still not 100% sold yet, like what would you say, like what can they expect at Hoof this year? Uh, like, um, so like the slumber party vibes. Well, so what I, what I hope my goal for this year is like, uh, it's taking that slumber party vibe, but also mixing it in with that like nostalgic, like Halloween party vibe. 
Um, but also that like powerful, like witchiness when you feel when you're around like a big group of like women and queer folks and you're like, Ooh, this is cool. Um, that also just like a kick-ass time, the lineup, like I didn't look up these bands. If you're still not sold, like listen to one song from each band and be like, Oh my God, it's gonna, it's like, I just, it's just, it's gonna fuck. And it's like, and it's gonna be so much fun. And also, some people have never been to a drag show before, so this is, like, a nice way for them to, like, dip their toes in. It's like, it's a punk show and there's drag performers. We get both. So, um, also, and you can come get a tattoo, or you can watch people get a tattoo. You can get your tarot read. There's just, there's a little something for everybody, and it's going to be a ton of fun. I can't sum it up any better. I, I completely <laughs> agree. And, you know, even similar to what I do with the lineup, like, obviously, I know, you know, quite a few of them on the the lineup but mm -hmm. anyone who I wasn't feel, I, familiar with i check them out their music's awesome it's, mm -hmm. you know so again the lineup is incredible and i'm very much looking forward to it anyone watching listening definitely get those tickets for pre-sale price as well <laughs> but now i also did want to highlight before we start wrapping this up uh the band, your, your band sweetie mm -hmm. so like what you know what's going on like uh currently with sweetie like what's like your upcoming plans like what's all going on we are working on our new album. Um, so we, let's see, I had old bandmates and we recorded the album with the old bandmates. Um, and it took us, and um, it took me so long to kind of like get things mixed and get things prepared that way that now that Joe and Ryan have been in the band for like over a year, but they're not on this album, we're not releasing, we're like, let's, Get this re-recorded we can do it ourselves quickly and get you guys on it because they are like they are in the band they are members of the band so i'm like i want you guys on it they want to be on it so we're the songs that we released we're gonna like pop those out as singles and then when we release the album together it's going to be versions with joe and ryan so it's we get like kind of whole new recordings of the songs which i'm kind of excited to do too um, so we are re-recording that right now, and it should be out probably, I think, by, like, early 2025 projected date. And then what else? We, oh yeah, we're playing at the Rocky Horror Picture Show in DeKalb. Um, we play um, before the Rocky Horror Picture Show in DeKalb uh, for the Halloween show, and we play before the Pride show. So let's see, the date for the Halloween show of the Rocky Horror Picture Show is October 25th. And if you've never been to the Rocky Horror Picture Show before, um, I highly, highly encourage everybody to go. It is a ton of fun. There's a shadow cast. If you don't know what that means, I don't want to spoil it for you. It is just insane. People are screaming. People are throwing things. People are dressed up um we play beforehand it's just like so much fun um sometimes i will also be in the cast during the show i think this year i'm just gonna have the band play before that um then what else um like months ago we uh got uh runner up for best punk band chicago and the chicago reader though so that was fierce nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh and then one more gig um and then we've got um on november 15th we are playing at Reggie's with You Died for their um, either, I think it's their EP release or their album release. Um, so You Died, I really like them. They, they're super heavy hitters with their with punk music. And um, so that's going to be at Reggie's on November 15th. Very nice. It sounds like well, you're going to have a busy you know, fall, you know, at least you know, September, October. So <laughs> I, I, I'm glad though. Glad to be, you know, better be busy than not. So you guys no, got some great opportunities. And you know, obviously you got some great gigs. Plus, you know, you you got a hoof coming up that you know you have to you know you're running it with all that. So mm -hmm. I, I I wish you the best with all that. Good, I, thank you. I, you're, gonna, you're gonna be busy. <laughs> <laughs> but now, uh, before before I got before we head out, I did want a question for you. Uh, do you have a favorite Sweetie song to perform live? Ooh, um, I uh, let's see. Uh, I think it depends on the crowd. Um, if it's a very queer leaning crowd, um, and a lot of my friends from the Rocky Horror cast are there, um, 
Actually, we we like have an unofficial crew. Um, it's more like an entourage, I guess. Um, they're uh, called the Sweetie Boo Boos, and they show up in like pretty much drag. Um, and last time they all came to the show, um, there's like a dance that goes with the song Science Fiction Double Feature from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And so they all came up and like did the dance while we played it. That was a ton of fun. Um, that I like because the song is so close to me. Um, and so when I see people singing it in the audience, I'm like, ah, oh, there's my fellow weirdos and I'm going to talk to them after the show. Um, let's see. I like, I like playing Devil Girl because that me and Joe and Ryan just kind of go really hard when we play it. And then Chum is fun too because that we've got like the Jaws intro when we play it. Me and Joe kind of have like a back and forth and Ryan's banging the shit out of the drums. So that's also a fun one to play. <laughs> but if you ask me tomorrow, I'd probably have a completely different answer. <laughs> so <it's really laughs> well, all right, well, maybe I'll ask you at Hope too. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now, uh, last question before before we head out. So, obviously, we've talked a lot about Hoof. I, as I said, I'm excited to attend. It, you know, and hopefully, everyone else watching, listening is as well. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm curious for you though. Like, what's like what the ultimate goal with Hoof in the upcoming years? Like, how you know you guys have grown a lot from year one to year two. Like, what's kind of you know the next few years looking like? Huh. Well, let's see. If I'm just doing it by my, I'm I right now I'm running it pretty much by myself. I've got friends here and there that are helping me, um, and I'm delegating kind of little jobs. Um, I think the more it grows, the more help I'll need. Um, I I I think I just kind of want to see what what the demand is for it. You know, if if people want it to be bigger and better or like two days instead of one, then I think if there's, if there's a push for that, if there's a, like a demand and a want for that, um, then I think I'm absolutely open to that. This year I even toyed, I was like, do I want to do two days? I'm like, no, I'm going to like two days would be way too hard for me to do by myself. But I think in the future, I'm like, you know, kind of building it into a, like a mini femme riot fest would be super cool. Especially like, original Riot Fest when it was all these different venues and stuff like that. I thought that was a really cool way to like pump life into the Chicago music scene. So um, yeah, maybe multiple days, maybe more bands. Um, who knows? But I still want to, I want it to be at its core um, an opportunity to spotlight the women, femmes, and thems of the Chicago land punk scene. That's like, that's the, that's the element that I need to keep. Right on, and well, I, I look forward to seeing uh, how this fest continues because, again, mm -hmm. it looks incredible. I think you know you're doing a great job with it so far, and I look look forward to seeing it hopefully for many more years in the future as well. So uh, thank you. Of course, of course. Uh, uh, as I said, links for Hoof will be in the description of this podcast, as well as for Sweetie as well. Birdie, thank you so much for stopping by Super Cool Radio. I had a great time chatting with you. Awesome. Thank you so much. For Birdie V of Sweetie and Hoof, I'm your host always, Matthew Thomas. Thanks so much for watching. This is Super Cool Radio. And remember, stay frosty. <laughs>